You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 420. Welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. Hi there. This week is an unplanned encore episode because, well, life. <laughs> the things that derailed my schedule this week, however, did not surprise God, even though they definitely caught me unaware. I'm not sure if that ever happens to you, but I needed the message of this week's encore episode. So in turn, I am sharing it with you. I'll catch you on the other side. The buzzword of the day is uncertainty, isn't it? The interesting thing is I believe we're constantly in a state of uncertainty. If we're honest with ourselves, we're, we're just lulled into believing we know how things will go from day to day, but we never really hold complete sway over the detail, details of our lives. And of course, that is never made more clear than the current situation that our whole world is in during this coronavirus pandemic. But be that as it may, I want to explore a topic on today's podcast inspired by J.J. Heller's new song, You Already Know. Before we get to it, let's listen. I need to tell you that I'm scared I feel completely unprepared. Nothing's what it was two weeks ago But you already know You already know Everything I'm scared of Everything I hope You hold my tomorrow And all tomorrow As I mentioned, I want to explore a topic today. Now, that's a Bible interaction tool exercise that I use from time to time, exploring a topic. I call these exercises bites for short, and the bite of exploring a topic is a good one. And I tend to head over to larger chunks of scripture and sit there. But today, I want to take the bite of exploring the topic of God's omniscience. Now, this is an attribute of God that basically means all-knowing, and it's important to understand, especially in light of such great uncertainty in our world today. Why? Well, because even though we don't know what's coming next, God does. God already knows. Now, whenever we explore a topic, we hop around scripture quite a bit. Now, this is when it's super beneficial that I take notes for you. So you can find the show notes for this episode at michellenizat.com forward slash 320. Or if you subscribe to my email list, uh, this list of scriptures that we're tracking down, they're already in your inbox. So if you want to be a subscriber, head over to michellenizat.com to subscribe today. I promise I won't flood your email, your inbox. It's just one email a week on Monday, and it it includes the show notes in the body of the email and the links to additional resources uh, on my website. So let's dive in to understand how we can know that God is all-knowing from scripture. Okay. In 1 John 3.20, it says, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Now I want to chase a small rabbit here because when John teaches that God is greater than our heart, I immediately think of what God teaches us through the prophet Jeremiah about our hearts. Now he says that the heart is deceitful above all things. So let's take the bite of following the cross reference. In fact, let's read the verses around that statement in Jeremiah 17. Starting in verse 5, it says, Thus says the Lord. Okay, so this is God speaking. Jeremiah is just writing it down. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, and it does not cease to bear fruit. 
Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Now, I know that we're focusing on the topic of God's omniscience, the fact that he is all knowing. But taking the bite of considering the opposite here, we are not all knowing. (laughs) No man is. In fact, when we place our trust in man, it's very clear that scripture here says that we are cursed according to Jeremiah 17. But when we trust in our our all-knowing God, we're blessed. Blessed to the point that we are not anxious, nor do we fear when the temperature rises, when it heats up, we will not fear and we will not be anxious. And And then when we return to where we started, where we now have a deeper understanding when scripture says, God is greater than our heart. And he knows everything. So now doesn't that make me a whole lot more now that we've gone and and considered the cross reference real quick. But our deceitful heart guides us to trust in man or honestly the strength of our own flesh. Instead of being planted by the water of the Lord free from fear and anxiety. So we have considered that God knows everything. But let me take it a step further. Not only does God know everything, but God has never learned and cannot learn. And so Isaiah chapter 40 asks some rhetorical questions. In verse 13, it says, Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? So these rhetorical questions are being asked right here in Isaiah. And of course, the answer is no one. No man shows God his counsel. God consults no one to help him understand because he is all knowing and therefore has never learned anything. Rather, he's always contained all knowledge and he always will. Now, Paul reiterates this in Romans chapter 11. In verse 33, it says, Oh, the depth of of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. So consideration of the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God leads Paul to celebrate the glory of God. And it's a good example for us to follow. So this is a really good time to insert the bite of meditation. Really think about the depth of the knowledge of God. Give give yourself some time to really consider that. Now, A.W. Tozer writes in his book, Knowledge of the Holy, he says, God knows instantly and effortlessly all matter and all matters, all mind and every mind, all spirit and all spirits, all being and every being, all creaturehood and all creatures, every plurality and all pluralities, all law and every law, all relations, all causes, all thoughts, all mysteries, all enigmas, All feeling, all desires, every unuttered secret, all thrones and dominions, all personalities, all things visible and invisible in heaven and earth, motion, space, time, life, death, good, evil, heaven, and hell. Now meditate on the depth of the knowledge of God. And in Isaiah 46, God says this for all people to consider. In verse 8, it says, remember this. This is God speaking. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country. I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. That kind of knowledge is deep and purposeful. Consider the the words declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done. Now, God's knowledge is not only vast, as we've already just seen, 
but it's deeply personal as well. Psalm 90 verse 8 says, you've set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. So we can't throw up flimsy excuses to our all-knowing God. He sees everything. And secret sins, that's kind of a joke, right? There are no secrets from our all-knowing God. Just like Adam and Eve, it doesn't do any good to hide from God. And I'm saying hide, and I'm putting it in quotes, air quotes here, because you can't hide. He's already there. And not in a, aha, I've got you sort of way, but in an I've got you sort of way. Listen to how Psalm 139 puts it in verse 7. Where shall I go from spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day for darkness is as light with you. I want to point out the part that says his hand leads us and his hand holds us. Isaiah 54, he puts it this way. For in verse 10, the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. So his unfathomable knowledge of us does not cause him to turn from us, rather to have compassion on us. Our Father guiding us, leading us with his hand, holding us. Our sins do not drive him away. He knows what they are. They're not secret, uh, but they do not drive him away. Now, a trustworthy guide, our God is a trustworthy guide because he has all knowledge. He has all knowledge of us. He has all knowledge of the circumstances we currently live in. And the ages to come, he has all knowledge. But let me back up again to talk about what we normally do. Okay, we normally look at all of the information we can see. And in this information age, there is a lot of information to digest. And then we act upon our view. Now, one would think that we would learn, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure how it is for you, but the older I get, the more I, the more I realize I don't know, right? Right. And just meditating for a short time on the vastness of God's knowledge should tell me that my view is limited, not just limited, but infinitesimal compared to the view of God. God has all knowledge. I have significantly limited knowledge. Now, remember how God cannot learn. We're learning all the time and we're actually never coming to the end of knowledge. You know, God continues to unlock knowledge to man. It it amazes me. I have doctor friends who talk about medical breakthroughs that happen every year, multiple breakthroughs a year. But to, and so, so to think that man is the keeper of that knowledge is hubris. It's just outright arrogance. But to think that God is holding out on us is a lie as old as the garden itself. The boundaries of knowledge were for our protection. And when Adam and Eve believed the lie of the enemy over the words of God, death was the result. Jen Wilkin writes in her book, None Like Him. I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, She says, we tell ourselves that if we knew the future, we would put that knowledge to good use. But how likely is that? It's far more likely that we would use that knowledge to stoke the flames of our self-reliance and to forward our own interests. And then she adds, we can trust God to manage the future without our help. It is none of our business. And so while we can rightly, with a good heart, ask for knowledge and wisdom from our all-knowing Father. In fact, he, he tells us to do that, all right? We need to let our capable God hold all knowledge and trust him completely. And so with this attribute of God squarely in our sights, I want to follow the bite of praying scripture. In fact, if I may, I would like to offer this prayer of Paul's over you. You can follow along in Ephesians chapter one. I'm going to start in verse 16. 
I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Amen. So what's next? Well, I want you to meditate on God's omniscience this week. We've only scratched the surface. Follow up on those the listing of scriptures found in the show notes. Um, I want you to read them for yourself in context, okay? And then perhaps even consider reading one of the outside resources I referenced. I've, I referenced A.W. Tozer's book, uh, Jen Wilkin's book. I'm going to link to an article also that I found online that was very helpful. Um, that'll be in the show notes as well. So consider reading one of those outside resources to increase your understanding of the attributes of God. I hope you enjoyed this week's Encore episode using J.J. Heller's song, You Already Know. And while you're in God's Word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneezat.com. Hop on Twitter at michellekneezat or Instagram at michellekneezat or on Facebook at michelle L. Nizat is my public page. And let's talk about what you're learning. Now, More Than a Song is a proud member of the NRT Podcast Network. You can check out other podcasts in the network and Christian music resources at New Release Today. Dot com. And I would be honored if you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so that you never miss an episode. But if you sign up on my website at michellekneezat.com, then I'm able to email you once a week with show notes, with all the scriptures that I use, links to resources that I use in my personal study, all the good stuff. My featured free resource for email subscribers this week is a one-page PDF of my top five bites. Get started moving beyond merely reading scripture. I really want you to start interacting with it, and you can use this tool to help. So head over to michellekneezat.com to subscribe today. Now with that in mind, I want to thank my newest subscribers who've subscribed recently like Patricia from the Philippines and Tamin from Australia and Jane from Michigan, Jay from Louisiana, Jessica from Namibia and Penny from North Carolina and Angie from Pennsylvania. Welcome. Now don't forget, you can listen to the podcast directly on my website, michellekneezat.com through iTunes or the Apple podcast app can follow on Spotify or through Stitcher Radio or your podcast listening app of choice. And you can leave a review by heading over to lovethepodcast.com forward slash more than a song. I would really appreciate it. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will be using In Jesus' Name, God of Possible by Katie Nicole to dive into scripture. I've already been studying for that. I can't wait to share what I'm learning with you. And if you liked this episode, however, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 420. While you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.